Right, so today is the day that the Evo gets a fresh set of brakes all round because at the minute it's sitting there waiting, waiting for parts. Jack parts are the hardest parts to get hold of. Obviously, this car is waiting for paint. Um, so these cars have just been sitting here doing nothing. If you're wondering where I've been, really, really been busy. Haven't been able to film much, but you can see here, the brakes on this car just don't want to stop it. Even though there's not a lot of wear on them, you can see there's no actual lip on the disc itself. When a disc sits around for a long, long period of time, it just becomes basically a bit of cast iron, rusty cast iron, and it doesn't want to work anymore. So um, a lot of people would still use these discs, but there's no way I am. These cars, obviously this car's running a lot of power, a lot of high performance, and it needs the brakes to be able to stop. It does not stop at the minute. You might as well just throw an anchor out and hope for the best. Obviously, these cars come with Brembos all round. So you've got front and rear Brembos, and they're quite a nice size as well. So you can get good brake discs and brake pads for these setups. Um, and you really only need to upgrade these when you are going off-road, i.e. on the track, and you're using these hard. Um, at the minute, obviously, we're going to stick with the Brembos. These are going to be refurbished in the future. You see a little bit tatty. We're going to take them apart, powder coat them, and everything. But at the minute, just want to get this car stopping so we can get it out on the road, get it MOT'd, and then we can actually start setting this thing up on the road. The major, major problem with these Jap cars, especially with the coronavirus at the minute, you can't import anything. It takes a long, long time. Even from Europe now with the import charges, it's an absolute nightmare. So I'm gonna show you what brake pads, brake disc combo we've gone for, brake fluid. These ain't even got uh, braided lines on the front or rear on this car. Do not know why. So we're gonna be changing them over. Let's show you what we've got. Right, so these are the bits that we got for the car. So you can see here we've got carbon metallic pads. Now we've got a front and rear, and these are gonna stop the car really well. These are a full on race pad, and they are really, really good um, when heated up. Um, low dust, low noise. Um, used these before, very, very good. A lot of people have used them in the past. If you've used them, comment in the comment section. I'll show you these. We've got front and rear braided brake lines. So you can see here we've got the whole set. HEL, obviously the best, Goodridge, HEL, one of the best for them sort of setup. So here as well, you can see the size of the front discs on these cars, them discs are very, very good and they're gonna stop the car. I tend to just go for grooved on these discs. These are carbon, these are high carbon discs, so they're really gonna work well with these pads. Obviously carbon metallic pads and carbon discs, then they heat up at the same rate, uh, have the same expansion rate. So obviously um, I don't go for drilled discs on any of the high performance cars because they lead to cracking over time and you end up getting cracks. Um, so we've got a pair of them and we've got the same for the rears as well. So you can see on the rears, exactly the same setup. The rears was what they took the longest to get. That to be custom made. You can see on the back of these, they're actually vented. So they really, really are good. And they are decent size as well for standard brakes. So um, that's why we haven't uprated them yet. We'll in the future, I'll get a set of Alcons or something. Uh, brake fluid, only the best really. The Motul 660, very good fluid. Use these in race bikes, race cars. Um, if you've used these in the past, you know this just won't boil. Um, match this up with high carbon brake discs high carbon brake pads, which I'm gonna unwrap for you now and show you them, and you've really got a good combo here. Another thing we have got as well, coming away from the brakes that we have been waiting for for an absolute age is the dash binnacle. So we sent this off, for, I don't know, two months ago, and it's finally come back. You can see here for the gauges, the pillar pod, as you see um, in the previous episodes, we changed the gauges around, changed all the wiring around, took the dash out. So that's gonna go in today as well. So we'll be able to put the AFR, the boost gauge, and all that lot into that top surround. It's gonna look a lot tidier. So now with the wheel off, let's show you these brakes up a little bit closer so you can actually see them. So from the front, if you took the surface rust off them, they actually look all right, pretty solid. But you look at them from the back and it's where most of the brake discs do corrode. And you can see here, they're absolutely shot. There's barely any sort of contact material going on at the back. You see like lumps of the cast iron and the brake discs are actually falling off. But bonus to these cars, these brake calipers are massive as stock. You can see how big they are. Very good setup as standard. So really at the minute, we're just gonna upgrade the pads and discs. In the future, we'll go for a different setup. So obviously these are a four pot, but they've got like the race caliper to tie up pins. You can, I think these are blue stuff, EVC. I don't know, we'll get them out, we'll have a look at them. So we're gonna get these calipers off. So as I say, in the future, we're actually gonna overhaul these calipers. We put stainless pistons in there. We're gonna put new seals in there and get these blasted and back to bare metal and then powder coated. New fresh stickers on there, they'll look amazing. Um, priority at the minute is obviously getting this car on the road so we can actually get some testing done. Obviously, we wanna be able to stop.
So with the disc off, you can see on the inside of the disc now, you can see obviously the outside looks all white and it's why always when you look through the wheel, you still think the disc is all white, but it's always on the inside of the disc that has the problem. So you can see here how crowded it is. There's no contact patch going on. Basically this disc has had it. So you can see why the car wasn't stopping very well. The brakes are absolutely shot. Fresh brake discs to go on there now. So you can see these are exactly the same size. Obviously they look slightly uh, bigger, but they're actually not. It's just be obviously they're fresh metal. So um, yeah, we're gonna have a massive difference in brake upgrade when we get these on. You can see they already had slotted discs on there as it is. Right, so let's get the pads out of these. So it's a very simple race inspired design. You can see you've got the sliding pins that go through the actual pad itself. So you literally just have to take out these clips, which is easy enough. Just pull them out of a pair of pliers. And then you just tap the pin through from the top. So you can see it here, it just knocks through here. So if you get a center punch in there, you can see that come through easy enough. So with the Brembo off, stripped down, you can see obviously in the future, we're gonna give it a rebuild, but there's loads of grease and grime, copper grease, um, all sorts of grease that have been put in there over the years for the pads and they've not been cleaned up. So use some brake cleaner, clean it up, get rid of all this grime that's in there. You can see, make it nice so that we put the nice fresh pads in and they don't get contaminated. Well, as usual, nothing's ever very simple. So you can see here that the uh, brake line snapped. Well, it didn't snap, it just wouldn't undo uh, at the union itself, rounded it completely off just would not undo, absolutely seized in this brake line, probably been on there since new. So I literally had to cut that off. I'm just gonna flare a new one on there um, because I can't replace that whole line because it goes up in the inner wing, all the way round, all the way around the bulkhead and goes up to the ABS. So there's no point replacing the whole lot. So I'm just gonna put a new union on here. So I'm just cutting that off now. Right, so there we go. Nice new union on there. I had to clean back all this brake line as well from all this under seal because it was just, I couldn't even get the fitting on there. But that's all done now, so we have to get the brake line back on. So on these lines, you get lovely stainless fittings, brand new washers, you can see the quality of them. Right, so there we go. Fresh discs on there now, high carbon discs. We've got the carbon metallic pads on there. Everything's cleaned up. All the old brake dust is all gone. Everything's been copper greased up, so we're gonna have no squealing, no problems. So you can see, we've got the braided lines on the back as well. That new terminal that's been fitted up there, all fresh to go. So we're gonna be able to bleed them with a new race fluid, and these are gonna be stopping so much better. So something that really bugs me on these Evos is these starter motors are normally so weak on them, um, whether it's age or whatever, but you can see how puny they are for a four-wheel drive car, obviously turning over a high compression engine. So I've just pulled off the starter motor, as you can see here. Um, it's quite difficult to actually do in place because um, the, this bolt here sits right close up against the cross member, but got them all out. And what I've just done basically is stripped down the start motor itself. You can see I stripped all the gears and everything out of it. And it's bone dry, there's hardly any grease in there. So I'm gonna give it a re-grease up. You can see how dry it is. So I've just cleaned it all out. Obviously you've got the magnets. Let's just quickly undo that. And uh, this is where all the action obviously happens in here. And obviously the magnets, the power for the magnets rotate the start motor. Um, you can see, it had, well, it had a load of gunk in here, a load of grime in here. I'm just going to break clean that out. You can see all the carbon build up and all, obviously, where the magnets and everything have broken down over time. This is obviously the original 
um, starter motor from new, still a Mitsubishi one. But when I poured it like out, you can see all the crap and everything come out of it. So the starter motor has been re-greased. It's all been put back together all nicely and they're all cleaned up now. So it should be a lot better than it was, even if it needs replacing in the future, we can get it replaced. But for now, very hard to get hold of. It's a Mitsubishi unit as well. So I wanted to try and refurbish it if I could. Right, so let's move on to the rears. So you can see on the rears of these, we've got Brembo's as well, just like the fronts, but these are two pots instead of four pots that are on the front. So you can see that these discs have had their day. They are really, really corroded. The car sits around for long periods of time without it being used. And obviously that hinders the brake discs. They don't get cleaned off. Um, water and salt just gets left on them. You can see they've rotted. Um, they've got a bit of a lip on the back as well. So they obviously haven't been replaced for a while. Um, now on these, calipers themselves they don't have nothing to do with a handbrake in the caliper the caliper just does the braking inside this disc here there's shoes either side of here just like you would in a drum setup you loosen off the cylinder in here and then you can put two m8 bolts in here to pull it off of the shoe itself if it's a little bit sticky or a little bit stiff then you can clean up all the, the gummings in there get any of the brake dust off and see if the shoes are all right to go again so that's what we're going to get up to Well, so now with the disc off, you can see on the left, this is the one that we've just took off the car. So you can see how rotten it is. It's obviously been sitting around for a long period of time. Probably hasn't done that many mileage, um, but they just rot and corrode with salt and years and years of not being brushed off. So you can see they're just doing nothing at all. You're literally breaking on the rust. Even inside the drum, the actual drum's not doing much at all. If you compare that side by side to the new one, you can see how much better they are. Um, these rear uh, discs were actually really difficult to get hold of and they took ages to get, obviously probably down to the coronavirus, but I think they had to make them custom for us just because they couldn't get hold of a set. So lovely fresh discs here. Obviously they've still got the coating on them. Give them a proper clean up. So you can see in here, these are the shoes, not much meat left on them, but as I say, they're just used for the handbrake. So they're not doing any braking, there's no danger there. So we're gonna order a set of them, get them replaced, obviously. Um, just pull them off, no problem. Gotta get some disc guards as well because they are a mess. Obviously they ain't got holes in or anything yet, but they're the right state and I don't like them. So onto the brake line itself. This is gonna be fun. So you can see in here, they've just put that tar under seal everywhere around here and somewhere under there is a union. So gonna have to clean that up try and get that and hopefully don't get that to round off but i'm not holding my breath so we can change them lines for the braided ones that we've got So I've just done my best to clean up that brake union you can see here and I've also put some like WD-40 on there to try and anti-seize it. Put some heat on it, I'll give it, give it a try and pray for the best. Well that's the result, that one actually cracked off. That heat and lubrication obviously helped out massively. So that's gonna save me a lot of time so I won't have to flare a new fitting on there, get that brake line straight on. Cause it's not a nice job having to flare a new fitting on there with loads of brake fluid coming out of the pipe. So that's the rears done as well now. We've got the nice carbon pads in there, fresh hardware. We've got the brand new discs on there as well. And I've just adjusted the rear shoes on the bottom as well with the adjuster through this hole. 
Um, so the handbrake's going to be nice and tight. We've got the braided lines on there now. They went on nicely. So they're uh, all talked up properly. 30 newton meters on them. And they're looking fresh on the front and rear now. So we've got the rears all done. We're going to have nice braking on the rear. Good braking on the front all the way round. Just got to bleed these up now with some nice fluid. So finally, the Evo brakes are fitted. Now, I know you probably think I'm exaggerating with how long this has took to get these brakes fitted. And I don't mean actually fitting them themselves. I mean waiting for them. Wait and wait and wait uh, for all these parts. And I don't know if you're building your own cars at the minute, but you will realize the market is really, really hard to find parts, especially for these JDM import cars. Um, obviously, you've got import taxes. We're not in Europe anymore. Parts are really hard to come by. I think what actually ended up happening because we chased them so much on these rears they actually outsourced them to another company to get them to us in time because we are a good customer of theirs so obviously the car's down the ground the wheels are on and the brakes are bled and, and they're looking fresh in there uh, it's really deceiving when you put the 18 inch wheels on there the brakes look tiny but they are actually massive and when you're looking from a distance they look really small but they're really really big brakes not it's only really deceiving until you get the wheels off and actually look them up close so we've got them on the fronts and the rears. So we've got high carbon discs, as you know, uh, uprated carbon pads on there as well. So we've got the Motul 600 fluid just gone in there and you can see the engine bay is looking fresh like it always did. Um, so now we are literally ready to get the interior tidied up. So on to the next job. So the next job is this, the dash binnacle. So as you see earlier in the episode we had this custom made so we had a three pod custom made dash binnacle in there and it's turned out really nice and when we took this dash out we obviously moved all the wiring as you see over to this left hand side if you haven't seen them episodes or you ain't seen the episodes on the evo go and watch them uh, very interesting so we've got two gauges there at the minute as you can see but i'm going to include a boost gauge into that as well so what's going to happen is going to fit them to either side and probably the boost gauge is going to go in the middle uh, might fit this one over to the right because it's the most important gauge oil pressure oil temperature we'll see so basically that just fits down the back of the dash like that and makes it look a lot lot cleaner so let's get this fitted right so that's the dash all back together so you can see it fits oem really looks nice and that gets rid of their vents that were there but got the oil pressure oil temperature gauge which is extremely important afr gauge is extremely important for fuel and this one's going to be for the boost gauge obviously uh, the boost gauges we've got at the minute are 60 odd mil gauges the ones that come out of the car so they won't fit in that hole so we've got to get a new gauge for it uh, this is going to be blanked because there's no stereo gun in, in, in here anymore and then basically the last thing we need to change is this steering wheel out because this is an absolutely uh, atrocious steering wheel momo would never make a steering wheel it's ugly apparently it's for drifting uh, we've got some nice little touches on in this interior as well you can see here we've got the recaro trim um carbon armrests some fancy looking gear knob it's supposed to be a special gear knob i don't know what it is um, it actually feels all right but a bit too big for my liking i like the sort of ball type ones um, but once that's done once the steering wheel's out and done we've pretty much completed the interior in here it's a nice place to be seats are very comfy uh, probably going to start stripping the back out a little bit, put a cage in there, make it sort of club sport. 